Hi, I'm Maurice. In this video I'm going to use Parian to map a line detection algorithm onto a many core system. Line detection is one of the basic algorithms found in many computer vision applications. And with a many core system you can speed up your application tremendously, as long as you can keep the CPUs busy as much as possible. But for most applications this means a serious rewrite of the code, which is risky and time consuming. And only after you are done, you know how much performance you have gained. In the next minutes, I will show you how Parian helps me to restructure my application to create massively parallel work, to identify shared data and blocking dependencies, to distribute work efficiently over parallel tasks with many threads, and select the right clusters and processes to run my code. This is Parian's representation of the Hoff line detection algorithm. I can explore the important functions and loops by focusing on the big boxes in this interactive browser. I'm going to investigate this main loop, which runs all the important functions and has lots of iterations. These data dependencies summarize the behavior of the program. They tell me that the loop iterations share data with each other. To run the loop in parallel without data races, I need to make sure that all shared data is properly protected. Parian finds all dependencies for you, even those buried deep down in the code. This includes complex cases like pointer aliasing that are difficult to find. Overlooking even one dependency will likely introduce problems in my parallel code. To make sure that my program runs correctly in parallel, I'm going to investigate the dependencies one by one to see exactly what data I need to protect. Each iteration of the main loop starts by selecting a random pixel in the image using a random number generator. Through this dependency, I can jump immediately to the piece of code that updates the state of the generator. I need to make it thread safe before running the loop in parallel and one way to do this is using an atomic read modify write operation. I'm marking this dependency as shared data to remember that I should make these statements thread safe later. After selecting a random pixel, the algorithm continues by removing the selected pixel from the worklist. The worklist is another example of shared data. Next, the algorithm checks if the pixel already belongs to a known line. In that case, it skips the rest of the loop body using this continue statement. It looks like solving this dependency is not so trivial. Therefore, I'm leaving it for now, but let's revisit it later. After selecting a pixel, the algorithm tries to detect a line through it. I see that this dependency exists due to updating the A data array, which holds the curves for the pixels. This subloop increments array elements for various angles, so we can detect lines in all directions. The other end of the dependency is located in this other subloop. It decrements the array elements once a line has been found. With proper synchronization I can also implement this array as shared data. Finally, a detected line is added to the result list by this cvsec push function. It doesn't really matter in which order the lines are added, so I'm grouping all similar dependencies together and specify them as shared data. Because I have studied the dependencies, I know exactly where to change my code. For most of them, a small change is enough to make concurrent data accesses thread safe. Unfortunately, there is one dependency remaining that requires a more extensive code rewrite. This may take quite some time, so let's continue to see if there are other ways to speed up the algorithm. Instead of parallelizing the main loop directly, I'm going to distribute the work over multiple tasks and optimize each task separately. Each task runs part of the loop and then passes control to the next task. If I choose my task such that they only have shared data dependencies, I can create parallelism inside the tasks by running them in multiple threads. These two loops dominate the total workload. Let's see if they can run in their own tasks. This first loop updates the array with curves as we saw earlier. I only see induction and reduction expressions in the loop. All of them are a form of shared data dependencies. So let's put the loop into its own task. The available code memory is limited for my system, but these code footprint indicators tell me that all my tasks fit on the processors. By moving the loop into its own task, the main task has to wait. It can only continue executing after the loop has finished. But my tasks run most efficiently if they run continuously without waiting. Therefore, I'm also moving the remainder of the main task into a new one. This way, each task can continue immediately after passing control to the next one. For the next task, I can choose between three nested loops. I'm going to choose the most suitable one. 
The iteration histogram for this loop shows a lot of variation in the number of loop iterations. For a proper load balance I like something that is more uniform. The inner loop has a fixed number of 180 iterations and it has only shared data dependencies. So I'm putting this one into a new task. And again I'm creating an extra task to make sure that all tasks can run continuously. In the task graph I see that only the main task still needs to wait for the last task to finish. This is due to the remaining dependency which I will address later. Now that I have distributed the code over tasks, I'm going to optimize each task separately by increasing the number of threads. The loop carried induction expressions in this task can be solved in a trivial way. This reduction computes the maximum value among 180 loop iterations. It is more efficient to choose only 20 threads that each compute a partial maximum and then combine the partial results. This speeds up the main loop by a factor 1.5. The second task contains only induction expressions and can be parallelized in a similar way, so I choose 20 threads. More threads give little extra gain because now the main task dominates the workload. The maximum speedup I can get this way is 14.8. A many core system is capable of much more, but then I need to keep more cores busy. Let's see how we can do this. Currently, performance is limited because the main task runs in one thread and needs to wait for the last task to complete. This is caused by the dependency on the pixel data that we saw before. It is there to check if the pixel is already part of a detected line. To remove the dependency, I can speculate that the pixel is still available for detection and postpone the check until the end of the loop. Then I can run the main task continuously in multiple threads without waiting for other tasks to finish. This requires rewriting the code, so first I want to see if it is worth the effort. Let's see what speedup we can get if I would remove the dependency. Now I choose 8 threads for the main task and increase the others accordingly. And I'm also increasing the threads for the tasks that run the loops. Apparently it is worth the effort. Changing to speculative line detection gives me a much better speedup of about 120 times. In a many core system I can only achieve good performance if I select the right processes and memories to map my code and data. I need to make sure that my tasks and threads fit on the processes and run without waiting for each other. And to keep communication overhead low, I need to put the data into memories close to the processes that use it. I will show how to do this with Perian in a future video. So in order to parallelize my application for a many core system, I've split my sequential application into 5 tasks that run without waiting. I learned which shared data I need to protect for race-free parallel execution. I also learned that I need to remove the dependency on the pixel data to create enough parallel work. And by running my tasks in multiple threads, I can speed up the application by a factor of 120. To summarize, I used Perian to restructure my application such that it runs efficiently on a many-core system. First, I explored my application and identified shared variables and dependencies in the code that I need to address. Then, I created parallelism by distributing the work over tasks with many threads that run in parallel. And finally, I selected the right processes and clusters for running my tasks and threads. In just 5 minutes, I learned how to partition and map my application onto a many core system and I achieved a speedup of 120 times. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, visit factorfabrics.com.